Mario Mazzinelli was born in Chicago, Illinois in 1916 to parents who had recently immigrated from Italy. At six years old, he suffered a tragic accident and injury while playing in the streets with friends that doctors predicted he wouldn't fully recover from. He was severely burned on his lower body, thus hindering his potential to walk for the rest of his life. Doctors were skeptical, but his Italian parents had a strong Catholic faith. With his father's tough love and home-inspired rehabilitation exercises, Mott's recovered, walking again in only a few months, a miracle by many accounts. In his teens, Mario Tonelli attended Chicago's DePaul Academy, where he played basketball, track, and football, bearing the number 58 on his jersey. He was a star in each sport and was heavily pursued by college recruiters. Torn between USC and Notre Dame, the deal was sealed by his mother when Notre Dame coach Elmer Layden showed up at the Tonelli home with an Italian-speaking priest. Tonelli spent three successful years on Notre Dame's varsity team as a fullback. In 1937, he ironically became the Notre Dame hero in a game against USC, where late in the game, he ran in the winning touchdown. He would graduate in 1939, taking with him a shiny gold class ring. Knowing his calling was football, and after a brief stint coaching, his career continued professionally as a player with the Chicago Cardinals after owner Charlie Bidwell signed him. He was living out his childhood dream, but it was 1940, tensions were high overseas, and soon he knew he couldn't ignore the calling to serve his country in World War II. After one season with the Cardinals, he enlisted into the Army and was stationed in Fort Bliss, Texas, as part of the 200th Coast Artillery. But when Tonelli received word he was going to be stationed in the Philippines, there was uncertainty that the path home would be as easy as he had hoped. On December 7, 1941, a swarm of Japanese soldiers bombed the station, forcing the American and Filipino soldiers to retreat to the Bataan Peninsula. For five months, Sergeant Tonelli fought alongside his men diligently, all the while their food and water resources depleted. On April 9, 1942, the American forces had no choice but to surrender to the Japanese, making it the beginning of Tonelli's time as a prisoner of war. The following day, Mario Mazzinelli found himself in what would come to be known as the Bataan Death March. In the Bataan Death March, the Japanese army forced 75,000 POWs to trek through 65 miles of unbearable landscape to various prison camps. Malnourishment, torture, and murder throughout the march resulted in over 15,000 deaths. After the war, Major General Yoshitaka Kawane and Colonel Keretaro Hirano would be tried by the United States Military Commission and found guilty of monumental war crimes. The two were hung for their crimes. In the Death March, one of the most common forms of brutality took place during confiscation of all POW's belongings. Cigarettes, gold tooth fillings, money, letters, jewelry, and photos from home would all be confiscated. Reports surfaced that any refusal to turn over belongings resulted in an immediate execution. One of these items was a gold ring. Mario Montanelli wore his Notre Dame class ring proudly throughout his time in battle, but it was eventually approached to give it up. Tonelli refused. After much protest, Tonelli relented once a friend pleaded, it's not worth losing your life. With the swift brutality hundreds of men faced for refusal, Tonelli knew as the soldier walked away, it was more than possible that he had just put a target on his back. A few minutes later, Tonelli saw a soldier approaching him. It struck fear into his heart, thinking that it might be too late. The soldier yanked him out of the lineup, the beginning to the same fate that so many had been given in the death march. As he was brought into a field, Tonelli felt something similar to a rock placed in his hand. He looked down to see his Notre Dame class ring resting in his palm. I was there, the Japanese soldier said. You scored the game-winning touchdown. The soldier had been attending university in the U.S. before the war, recognized Tonelli, and noticed the ring in the Mountain of Mementos. He told him he made sure all would be well, but to keep his ring hidden until he returned home. Tonelli would then conceal the ring as he endured slave labor, starvation, parasitic infections, and unspeakable trials. It served as a beacon of hope that he would make it home. By the late summer, American planes were dropping medicine, food, and cigarettes to the American prisoners at the camp with notes that said, Hostilities have ceased. We'll see you soon. Mott's never saw the Japanese officer ever again. Tonelli survived 42 excruciating months as a prisoner of war, arriving back to the States at 98 pounds, a shocking drop from the 210 pounds he carried in 1941. Knowing Tonelli was no longer the physical specimen he was in 1941, and aware of what he had endured as a POW, the great Charlie Bidwell once again signed Tonelli to a contract with the Chicago Cardinals and had him take the field for one more game against the Green Bay Packers, thus making Tonelli eligible for his NFL pension. Tonelli entered local politics and worked in the local government until he retired in 1988 after 42 years of public service for Cook County, Illinois. Mario Mazzinelli is more than just an incredibly talented athlete that serves as a staple in Chicago's history. He is also a resilient survivor of unspeakable trials faced during his time in World War II. He proved, even from the age of six, that he was always a fighter. Tonelli will always be honored for his time serving this country overseas, but also for coming home and continuing to serve the city of Chicago, leaving behind a better city and country in his wake.